We're actually doing this on uh, DIY Auto School today. We're not going to go on SWR and C. Uh, so usually I do these live videos on SWR and C, but I haven't done a live video on DIY Auto School lately. So I decided, you know what, we'll do it here. Um, now I do have a different crowd here than I do there. So if you didn't, if you missed the uh, live videos that I've been doing on SWR and C every morning, and I'm trying to hook up my computer here so we got a monitor. So um, normally I will do these videos on uh, SWR and C, but today we're going to do it on DIY Auto School. So um, if you're confused and you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope everybody's going to have a good weekend. My weekend's going to be kind of sad. Uh, we'll start out with that uh, my little miniature Pomeranian Axel passed away um, on Tuesday. Uh, it's been very, very hard and very, very, very uh, hard. It's a big, big hill that you got to climb when you lose your pet. Um, I had three dogs in my life. In the last 42 years, I had a uh, Australian healer, blonde healer. Um, he lived to be, uh, he lived to be um, 18 years old. And then I had my little buddy, Bruno, which was right here. And a lot of people that watch my videos remember Bruno. This is my little pal, Bruno, and he sits on my desk. And then after I had Bruno, I swore to myself I would never get another dog because it's just too devastating when they die. And um, I decided that, um, I'll tell you what, this internet service out here sucks. But then I decided I'll go ahead and get another little Pomeranian and Axel lived 13 years. And when you have your pet, for 13 years or 10 years or however long and they pass away or you got to put them to sleep, you really wake up and realize that time is not on your side. Um, it doesn't even feel like I have, I've had him for 13 years and, uh, you know, it's just really devastating to lose one of your best little pals in the world. But, I don't want to make this video out to be that. I did that the other day and I'm probably going to take that video down, but I might leave it up. I don't know. Um, so I, I want to tell everybody out there, if you have a pet that you've lost, I don't care if it's a bird or a cat or a dog or a turtle or whatever. Believe me, my friend Pete knows how you feel. Um, I'm actually going to have a picture printed of him on aluminum and then I'm going to frame it with one of my custom frames. And I might try to start doing a business of this because, you know, pets are very loving. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if you have a faithful pet, that pet means more to you than any human being on earth. Why? Why is that? Because the pet is unconditional love toward you. No matter what you do to your pet, or how you treat your pet, your pet will always love you till the end. Um, even if he's an ornery little bastard like my little Axel was, or he's a loving little teddy bear like my little pal Bruno, or he's the most dedicated shadow that will follow you around everywhere you go, like my healer topper, your dog, and I'm using the word dog because that's what I had, your dog, is always with you everywhere you go. There's a movie called, uh, what's it called? Hearts. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie. Uh, yeah, inside that movie, there's a guy that's sitting at the table and he is kind of a psycho guy he's sitting at this table and he says, he says, my dog is always with me. My dog is always with me. And he doesn't have a dog. 
Well, even when your dog dies, he's still with you right here and right here. And you, you'll never get him out of your mind. Your dogs or dog will always be with you for the rest of your life. And in a way, it's kind of tormenting because you can't get him out of your mind. I mean, my little pal Bruno died 14 years ago, and I still think about him almost every day, every day. Uh, my little pal Axel, I got a picture of him hanging up over here. Um, you know, it's just a real sad deal. So anybody that has feelings for their pets like I do, um, you will know what I'm talking about. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, you know, a nice little prayer for my buddies. And hopefully they're waiting for me or possibly looking down at me right now. Um, and uh, we'll be together again. So we got a bunch of viewers going on today. Uh, we got Robert Kraft, Bizzo Moto, uh, Mighty Motors, David D, Freddie Sodium, Roger Goodman, Marble Flows, uh, Kevin, Matt Luzerick, Ford, Kevin McCarthy, Eddie Kane, and Alan Wind, Drew, Drew Flew, and Pat Powell. Okay, so we got a lot of people. We're not going to read the comments right this second. Uh, everybody's saying hi. How you doing? Um, I remember, Bruno, from when you were working on that Mustang. Well, it wasn't that Mustang. I think Bruno had already passed away at the time, but Axel was here. Uh, speaking of Mustang, uh, the Mustang should be picked up. The Rustang should be picked up by Wednesday, I believe. So we'll be filming that. And hopefully we won't have any issues. Um, we had a big issue. I don't know if I made the video here on this channel or if it was on my other channel. I've been making a lot of live videos lately because it seems like live videos are popular. Um, we had a driver come pick that car up. And I think I've already mentioned this, but I'm just going to go through it randomly real quick. And he dented the hood. Now, the camera, when I had the camera set up, because when people come and pick these cars up, I always film them or at least take pictures. That way it covers my ass. Well, the camera was set up way back here because I had to go outside and I told him not to do anything until I got back. But of course, being the Russian guy that he was, he didn't listen to me. And of course he didn't speak English, but he knew how to tell me that I don't talk English. If you want to talk to me, text me. And then I asked him, are you from Russia? Oh yeah, I'm from Russia. I love Ukraine. Ukraine, my favorite place in the world. I wish I lived in Ukraine. I love Ukraine people, which I don't know why he told me that. Now, I got this on film, and I might make that video soon. I don't know if I'll make it, you know, but whatever. Uh, I got so much raw video footage that I can probably quit filming and make videos till I die. But uh, anyway, so he did dent the hood, and I'm thinking the way that he dented it is on these cars, these old cars, most people, when they try to open the hood, they push down on them, unlatch them, and then pull them up. So I'm thinking what he did, and uh, he didn't use his, this hand. He used his fist because he had gloves on. And I'm thinking he used his fist, and he pushed down. You see what I'm saying? Pushed like that. Um, so I ended up fixing the hood on that car. Uh, it took a week to fix the hood. I ended up completely painting the whole thing. It was a very big nightmare disaster. But the good thing is, is that we got the car done. Uh, whether I get paid for it or not, I don't give a shit. Uh, I just want the car gone. And if the owner is watching this video, I don't have anything against you. Believe it or not, the owner that owns that car is a very nice person. Uh, his name is Frank. And he is, I mean, when Minnie was sick, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, uh, when Minnie was in the hospital, he actually sent Minnie a, a statue of Mother Mary, uh, uh, Mother Mary of Fatima, and we went and had it blessed, and it's a beautiful statue. And, I mean, Frank's a very nice guy. And all the hollering and cussing I do about his car has nothing to do with him. That's just me and the car. And that's how it is when you own your own shop, automotive shop, you might say. The car is always your enemy until you're done with it. 
it's always a piece of shit until you're done with it. I mean, that's just how it is, <laughs> all right? It's a piece of shit the day it gets here. It's a piece of shit when it leaves because when you have a business like mine and you work by yourself and live in the place that I live, you know, no friends, no nothing. You just, you and your shop, you got to talk to something. So you end up talking to the cars and the car, when, when you have issues and problems, the car is the, uh, the batting cage or the punching bag that you need to holler and cuss at. So um, anybody that watches my videos and your car happens to be in my shop and I'm working on it and I say piece of shit or this car's this or blah, blah, blah. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It's just, that's the way it is when you do this work. And anybody that watches, uh, that has their own business will relate to it. <clears throat> Mark Cazello says, go Navy. Thank you very much. Your dogs uh, have had the best life with you. They uh, will, were definitely spoiled. Yes, they were, but uh, I miss them very, very much. Uh, Jay Russell says he remembers the video where I actually went to the airport and picked Axel up at the airport. Yeah, that was a very long time ago, but if you blink your eye, it's not that long ago at all. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, the car will be picked up and this time we're not having some fly-by-night Jerry Rig outfit come get him. Uh, we're gonna have a professional 18-wheeler 53-foot truck with winches and 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 tie downs and everything else that are going to pick the vehicle up. Um, so the Mustang will be leaving after almost 10 years of having it. We are now working on the Camaro. Uh, the Camaro is final body work has been done to it. Uh, I have it sitting in the bay over here today. I will reprime the vehicle. I'm going to spot prime all of the body work that I had to redo. And when you restore a car the way that it should be done, you will do the body work on that thing at least three times, maybe four. If you're going to do it the proper way, um, I mean, watch my videos and learn from the videos. That's why I make videos. I don't make them to make money. And we're going to get into that in a minute. But... My videos are here and I'm here so you can learn, okay? And a lot of YouTubers will say that. A lot of YouTubers will come on here and make videos and say, oh, well, I make videos for my, my viewers to learn from. And most of the videos they make, you don't really learn anything from them. Usually what those people do, they will go on, like, I'm gonna use myself for an example, YouTube channels like mine and watch some videos and then recreate those videos because they don't have no concept or creation that comes out of their head. They got to do, they got to copycat everybody. So, yeah. Um, I get a lot of comments that, uh, you know, these other YouTubers watch my videos. Uh, there's this one guy, I don't know who the fuck this guy is, named uh, uh, Bronco Billy. Um, and you get these comments. Oh, Bronco Billy watched your video and he said you're doing it wrong. Oh, Bronco Billy said that you should have done it this way. Well, you know, Bronco Billy can go fuck off. How's that sound? Okay. Tell Bronco Billy to go fuck himself and stop watching my videos. Okay. I don't give a fuck about Bronco Billy. Um, let's see. Uh. There's a lot going on today. Uh, Joe Shamardi says, what's up? Um, have Corella. Uh, that's the same. Hate the POS. I don't know what's going on. Mo Moab is woke. Uh, yeah, I will agree with that. Moab is woke. Okay. Um, do you know that I only have two acquaintances in this whole town? This whole town, all these people who live here. I only have two. Did I say friends? I have two acquaintances. Let me tell you why. I don't hang out with them. I only talk to them on the phone, possibly. I might see them and casually hang with them for five or ten minutes. But other than that, you know, life is life. Um, I'm a people person. Is anybody out there a people person that likes to go out into a crowd, that likes to shake hands and make friends, that likes to be 
around people and talk to them? Well, I am. I'm that type of guy. Okay? And when you live in a woke town like this place, it sucks. It's like you are imprisoned. Speaking of imprisoned, I'm getting ready to build a 10-foot fence across my property to block off the Airbnb, which I will be making a video of that. And I will be showing you the piece of shit Airbnb house that I'm blocking off. And hopefully I'll be doing some beautiful advertising for him so he can just get so many people there because when I get done with this video that I'm going to make, he probably won't get anybody to rent his piece of shit house that he paid a million dollars for and turned it in to a mega uh, uh, Airbnb house and doesn't give a shit about anybody else around here except himself. The guy's such a piece of shit, he won't even help pitch in to build a fence. If you want a fence, build it yourself. I don't care. Of course you don't care. You don't live here. You live in some big rich-ass neighborhood up in Park Cities or, or Salt Lake or somewhere up there where you don't have to worry about all these fucking people coming over here, strangers renting a house next to you, making obnoxious noises and having fucking lights on all night long, driving up and down fucking driveways and, and partying. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it because that's where I live. I live in the middle of Airbnb Central. And no, I can't move. I can't do that right now. Why? Because first of all, I don't have the fucking money to move. I got all my money invested in this fucking dump. And another reason is to sell my place, the market isn't even good enough to sell. And where the fuck am I going to go anyway? Where am I going to go and start my fucking business all over again? Uh, I'm 62 years old. I don't think I'm going to be starting anything over, okay? By the time I actually opened a shop, started my bid, I'd be 70 fucking years old. So yeah, I got fucked uh, in Moab. That's what I should have named this video. I got fucked in Moab. There you go. So um, we'll do a big continuous uh, video one day. Uh, matter of fact, I probably won't do it live. I'll just edit it about what the fuck's going on around my friend Pete. Uh, there's another house over here. Uh, God rest his soul. The guy passed away in it. Uh, he passed away, lived there for a long time. Actually, he's, he was the very first one that actually moved out here right where I'm at. And uh, he passed away. Well, they're getting ready to make that house into an Airbnb house. Oh, and then on top of all that, which I'll show you in the video, there's uh, like 10 acres. And they're going to build three-story apartment buildings on it. And then where's my friend Pete at through all this? Here's where I am right here. This is me. Here's an Airbnb. Here's an Airbnb. Here's... The apartment's over here. Here's an Airbnb over here. Here's two Airbnbs here. There's Airbnbs over here. There's this big fucking blue building that they turned into an Airbnb right here. And then there's two people that live behind me that are not Airbnbs. But here I am right in the middle of all the Airbnbs. Now, the conclusion is, the way that we can fix that, is I will have to build 10-foot fences all the way around my property. Have you ever lived on one acre of land with your shop and your house in it? Okay, because I, I got a 30, I think I, my shop is 3,500 square, no, 3,750. That's including my shop, my office. And then, of course, my house. Doesn't leave much room on one acre. And then put a 10-foot fence all the way around you. I might as well say I'm in fucking prison. Folsom prison. I'm going to have 10-foot fences all the way around me. Ain't that fucking great? Yeah. Um, I wish I would have bought property in the boonies. This guy just said, Mike says, I live in the boonies. Well, I wish I would. And then, see, that's the deal. When all this started, when I looked at this property, you had to have a shop on the property. No question about it. That was the mega 100% thousand fucking rule you had to have a shop. And then if you want to put a house on the property, it can be a small house. But it has to be permanently mounted. It cannot be a mobile home that you can move. It has to be an IRC 
uh, uh, qualified house, which that's what we got. It's a permanent mounted house, manufactured home. Well, guess what, guys? I'm the only one that did that. I'm the only one that went through the rules and regulations and went through all the crap for five years to put the shop exactly where it is and to make sure it was the exact height and to get the little small house that the only house that you could have and go through all this uh, bullshit with these fucking people. And then after I did it, it's like, oh, uh, that's my property. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Uh, what about the shop? Well, fuck that. I don't give a fuck. I own this property. This is what I'm going to do. There you go. There you go. And that, my friend, is called bad luck. Um, I have a friend that died many years ago. His name was, uh, his name was uh, Leon Lassiter. Very good friend of mine. It was very sad when he passed away. Uh, he was actually a um, drug addict prescription drug addict. He was hooked on, uh, I think it was Oxycontin pain pills. And he, um, he was an old man. He was 72 when he died. I'm an old man. We're getting old people. When you get to that certain age, you're an old man, old lady. I'm sorry to say it. Look at my hair. Okay. It ain't fucking blonde. It ain't brown. All right. It's all, it's turning gray. There's nothing I can do. Uh, the only thing I can tell you, if you're getting old, exercise, ride your bike, wake up early in the morning, get the fuck out of the house. Don't be a couch potato. I get up every morning at four o'clock. Today I was up at three, 2.45. Why? My dog died. I think I got the right to wake up early if I fucking want him. Anyway, poor old Leon, um, when he got to a certain age, he decided he, sh he should start going to church. Everybody thinks, you know, when they're young, they don't want to go to church. I, I ain't got time for that. I'll do that later in life. God forgives everybody. Doesn't matter what you do, you get forgiven. So anyway, Leon decided he's going to start going to church. So he started going to this Baptist church in Texas. And um, they gave him an application. And I said, why did they give you an application? And he said, well, I don't know. I got to fill this application out because... You know, they, they, want, they want tidings. They call it tidings. They want to get paid is what they want. You owe them to go to church. Do you believe that shit? I don't know anybody to go to church. If I want to pray to God, that's free. I don't think Jesus should be sold. All right? People that make money off Jesus Christ and God are profit makers. That's it. Profit preachers. All right? So anyway, he fills the application out, and then we kind of forgot about it. Well, anyway, about a year later, um, he was getting kind of old. He was like 71 by this time or 70 and a half or something. So he's getting kind of old. So he isn't getting out of the house as much anymore. So at lunchtime, I decided, you know, every now and then I want to go buy Leon lunch. I'm going to bring it over to his house. I'm going to hang out with him. We're going to eat lunch. So I called him on the phone. I said, what do you want, buddy? Uh, you want McDonald's, you want uh, uh, Arby's, what do you want? You know, whatever you want, I'll go buy it, bring it over, we'll have it. So we went and got some McDonald's, and I think my nephew Dylan was with me. Uh, anybody that's been watching my videos for a long time, uh, there was a kid that worked for me, his name was Dylan. Well, he's my adopted nephew. I haven't seen him in many years, I don't know how he's doing. Hopefully he's doing good. Um, he worked for me for off and on five different times after the fifth time I said no more fuck off you know I can't do it uh you're not responsible enough you don't want to do shit you want to work out of my toolbox and I'm tired of it so anyway back to Leon we go over there and Leon is ready to start crying he's ready to start crying what's going on what's up he says I'm devastated Pete I, I can't believe this what 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 go ahead and tell me Look at this letter I got. I opened the fucking letter up, okay? I open up the letter, and I'm reading it. And then I see on the bottom of this letter, it's a bill. It's a bill. And on the bottom of the letter, it says $2,755. And I'm looking at and then it, I noticed at the top, I finally realized this is from the church. He got a bill in the mail from the Baptist church 
and they wanted him to pay, and there was even an envelope in there to put the money in, or check, or whatever, payable, maybe, it even said make check payable to the Baptist Church, $2,755. I said, why are they sending you this? What are you all money? Well, I haven't been paying my tidings. When was the last time? I haven't even gone to church there in three months, four months. And they're sending him a bill in the mail. Un freaking believable. I could not believe it. I couldn't believe it. Unbelievable. Um, I remember Dempa Limpy. Yeah, well, good for Limpy. Don't give a fuck about Limpy. He's the one that actually put the last candle on the fucking birthday cake, okay? That wouldn't blow out. After him, no more employees. Worst fucking employee I ever had in my life. What a piece of shit. Um, somebody actually told me that Limpy possibly died. So if he did, RIP Limpy, I'm sorry. Um, I don't mean to cuss and holler about you, but yeah, he was a bad, he was a bad cookie, that Limpy guy. Very, very uh, bad situation. But, you know, I just couldn't believe that, um, I couldn't believe that Leon got a bill in the mail from the church. Has anybody ever got a bill in the mail from the church? If you have, leave a comment. I want to know. I want to know about that. Uh, oh, okay, here you go. TJM says, this happened to me at the Methodist Church. Wow. Uh, Mario Cruz says, uh, what happened to Swampy? I actually talked to Swampy. Um, somebody asked me if I ever talked to him. So I actually called him on the phone. And I talked to him for about an hour on the phone. I was going to make a video out of what happened to him, but the conversation we had really didn't go the way that I thought. And I really don't want to go into the conversation because I'm not too happy with the way Swampy ended up. And we're going to leave it at that because everybody really loved Swampy. And if I bring out the story of what happened to him and where he's at and all that, you probably wouldn't like him anymore. So the best thing that we can do is just let Swampy be Swampy back in the days of Swampy. And, you know, pray for him that he has a good rest of his life. That's all I can tell you. Uh, Mo AJ says, I remember Pete's dog, Bruno. Bruno was a beautiful little dog. I loved Bruno. I love Axel. Axel will always be in my heart. Um, I was going to tell everybody out there, I'm going to probably start, and I, I'm kind of advertising because pets mean a lot to people. And what I'm going to do is I am going to, a lot of people nowadays are getting their pets cremated. All right, I had Axel, uh, this is Bruno, and I'm getting Axel cremated too. But this is my little pal Bruno. And it gives you the comfort that your little dog is still with you. It gives you the comfort that, you know, my little dog, like I was telling you about that movie, Wild at Hearts, that's the movie, uh, where the guy's sitting at the counter and says, my dog is with me everywhere I go. My dog is always with me. So when you get your little dog... Um, cremated like that, you know, you got the comfort that your little dog is with you, especially when you can see him. Uh, what I'm going to do is I, I'm getting a picture made of Axel. Uh, I'm getting it printed on aluminum. And then I'm going to make a frame, one of my custom frames. But in the corner of that custom frame, there's going to be a little tray where you'll be able to, where I'm going to set the ashes in there right next to him. And then I'm possibly going to make another little tray on the other side where his favorite toy will be sitting. Um, and I might advertise these to make these because I'm self-employed, okay? And when you're self-employed, uh, you got to come up with ideas to, you know, stay busy. So um, I'll be showing everybody that when I get done. And then I'm going to try to figure out how I can advertise those and possibly make them for other people that really love their pets a lot and would like to have memories of their pet and a place to 
cherish their pet as they just cremated and possibly their favorite toy that they had. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, and it's kind of sad because um, it takes a long time to get over a dead pet. I know I'm talking about this again, but uh, I'm really sorry. Uh, Greeno's Garage uh, remembers when I was chasing my little Pomeranian in front of my shop in Dallas. Uh, my little dog, Axel, when I first got him, and I'm going to tell you, he was a psycho dog from the day that he was born or the day that I had him to basically almost the day that he died. Uh, he was a little terrorist, but I loved him with all my heart. He was like uh, my best little friend forever just like Bruno was, and they always will be. And I also had my other dog, Topper. I don't have any, This I had Topper before technology took over, and I don't really have a lot of pictures of Topper. But uh, Axel, if I let him outside, I had to put him on a leash when he was little because he would literally just haul ass take off. He was like a race car. One time I let him out, and he got away from me. He, the leash came out of my hand. He ran out into the street. And an 18-wheeler was coming. And he ran in front of the 18-wheeler, ran around the 18-wheeler, and went under the 18-wheeler trailer and back up on the lawn before the 18-wheeler can run over him and kill him. I couldn't believe it. Uh, the back tires of that trailer were like this close to him. I thought, I thought I was going to watch my dog get smashed in the street. And then, of course, when he came up, then he ran around my shop, and it took me 45 minutes to catch him. Uh, there was another time he ran out in the street, and I ran out after him. And I'm over there running in the street. I look like a big old clown running around trying to catch him because he was only like this big when, you know, when I got him. And I'm running around, and here's all these people in the cars going like this real slow around me and him. You know, and then I had traffic backed up on both sides. And then I, I fell over. I twisted my knee. That's when my knees started hurting. And that day was my knee problem issue is when I twisted my knee and I fell on the ground. I finally caught him. And then someone in the car, I couldn't even hardly get up. Someone in a car helped me get up. And that, that was crazy. Um, speaking of crazy... Has anybody bought a water heater at Lowe's or Home Depot? Or poss possibly a lawnmower or a big uh, bulky item of any kind whatsoever, including a refrigerator or a stove? They have stickers all over these items now that say, do not bring, do not bring this item back to the store you purchased it at. Call this 1-800 number. They don't want you to return it. They, 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 if you don't know the situation, that's your warranty. Call it a 1-800 number and talking to a foreigner in Zimbabwe or, or a Palestinian and don't even do shit. There's literally stickers all over these. these do not bring this back for a refund. Call this phone number. Yeah, fuck you. If it doesn't work, bitch, I'm bringing it back. You can fuck off. I've been through that shit before. I was actually sick for a while. Hadn't seen him. No, Fred. Uh, actually, Axel was doing really good. The problem with Axel, he didn't like coming in my shop. Uh, he was not a shop dog. He was a house dog. Um, he didn't even... When it was real hot outside, he didn't even like going outside. So... There wasn't nothing wrong with him. But what happened to him, I'll go ahead and tell you. Uh, I was taking him outside here for a walk. We got in between, like I do every morning at 7 o'clock. And we got in between the buildings, and he stopped in his tracks right there. And he started doing this like this. And I'm freaking out going, are you okay? What's going on? And then he turned around, and he started walking back to the house very, very slowly and then that, at that time, I picked him up, and I can feel his little chest, like, you know, moving real quick. And his little body was trembling. I brought him in the house. I went down on the floor. I called Minnie over. I put him on the floor, and I was petting him. 
and then many grabbed him and he fell over on his side and then many was massaging him and then he started breathing okay. And when we took him to the doctors, they said that he had congestive heart failure and he can live one day or one year. Well, he ended up living approximately two and a half weeks more and it was time for little Axel to go to, do to heaven and be wait for me, so. Minnie's not handling it good, Jay Russell. Uh, Minnie has been crying every single day and she hasn't slept. Bruno used to sleep with Minnie every night for 13 years. And when your little dog is gone and you don't hear him breathing in the middle of the night, it's very, very hard. So, yeah. Uh, Roger says, I bought a water heater and it had a hum after I installed it and I called the manufacturer and they sent a plumber to fix it for free. Uh, something to do with the burner plate. Okay, I have a hot water heater and I called the 1-800 number and they talked to me in a language that I couldn't understand or barely understood and they wanted me to start tearing the hot water heater apart in pieces to diagnose it over the phone. I told them to fuck their self and I called Home Depot up and said, I'm bringing this hot water heater back. I want another one or a real, oh, no problem, bring it back, you can do that. So if you see a sticker on there that says, do not return this, fuck that. Take the motherfucker back, get a refund and get a new one, okay? The corporations are here to fuck you people any way they can. All right, here's a good example of fucking you. Then you don't even know it because you are brainwashed. Okay, you are a brainwashed person. Did you know that? If you use a Swisher, do you know what a Swisher is? I'm sure you do. One of them Swisher brooms, those little Swisher, you're brainwashed into spending money you don't need to spend. Why am I saying that? Because a Swisher is a continuously buying product to use. That means that you continuously have to buy the pads to use it. When all you got to do is use a fucking broom or take a towel and wrap it around your broom and spray it with water and do the same thing and then take the towel off, throw it in the washing machine and wash it. So if you are a Swisher user, you are a dumbass. You are stupid. And if you don't like my comment, get the fuck out of here. Every cleaning utensil that you buy these days is a purchase to use product. That means that you have to continually buy stuff to use it. That's how these corporations make money. They have people that all they do is sit at a table of 50 people plus and figure out how can we get the consumer to continuously buy our product. So keep using your Swisher instead of taking your broom and wrapping a towel around it. Or whatever the fuck you use. You're a dumbass. Hello? Wake the fuck up, America. Microfiber cloth uh, on the Swisher frame. Spray it with clue. Well, that, that see that's uh, that guy's smart. He's not buying the Swisher pads like you are. He's got the microfiber, and when he gets done, he probably throws it in the washing machine and washes it. You stupid ass motherfucking people. Uh, cell phones are a racket. Of course they are. That's all there is is a racket out there. Here's the real racket, and I want to let me see if I can do this. I want to show you this. I'm going to turn the camera around. Here's the YouTube racket, okay? All right, I'm going to show you the YouTube racket here. We're going to go ahead and flip out of this. We're going to go ahead and open a new window up. And we're going to go right here to DIY Auto School. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of my videos. Let me go ahead and go to videos. So I'm going to click on one of my videos. Now I want you to show, this is a YouTube... And I've been telling people about this forever. I've been telling people about this. And I don't, is it going to show on this one? I don't know if it's going to or not. 
Okay, hold on. Let me do this. Um, we are, oh, we're not even on DIY. Okay, hold on. I got to go to my other channel here. I'm signed into my other channel. Okay, so we're going to go to this video. Uh, let's go to videos here. So we're going to go to this video right here. Now, I'm looking at the video here, and I'm going to zoom in. We're not going to watch the video. I've been telling people about this for many, many years, and a lot of people don't believe me about this. Now, I don't do this because I don't have money to spend to make money. Now, what YouTube does is you can actually buy, you can actually buy views. You can buy views. You can buy thumbs ups. You can buy anything you want to make it look like your video has millions and millions of hits. And what that does is when you promote your video that way, it's going to make other people click on it because they're going to be curious why that video has 600,000 hits in four days. Well, to do that, you have to pay big money. Now, I'm going to show you, and I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to show you how it works. So if you look at the bottom of my video right here, I'm going to try to zoom in. And can you see that word right there? Can you see that where it says promote? All right. See that right there? That says promote. Okay. So what we would do if I wanted to pay to have views, because this is how fake the world has become, I would hit that promote button. And then it says, new video promotion. What's my goal? I want more engagement with my video. I want more views. Okay, so we'll stick with that. Then we go over here and we hit next. And then it says, what's your target? How many, we'll go ahead and hit next again. What's your target? Where do you want it to hit the hardest? Okay, multiple countries. The promotion may serve more in more countries. So you keep on going. Then you get to this one. What's your budget? I want to spend $200. I want to spend $200 US dollars to promote this video. They want you to buy views. Okay? They want you to buy the views. They want you to pay them to get fake views and fake likes. We're going to click out of this because I'm not going to do it. Because then it goes to your billing and all this other shit. So we're going to click out of that. All right. And we're going to click out of all this. But that's the scam. That's how the world lives now is scamming people. Did I just tell you about the Swisher? About how you got to pay to use it? Did I just tell you about that? I think I did. I just showed you. How people are getting all these views. They're getting all these views. Okay. And when you see a video that has, and, and here's a good example. All right. Here's a good example. Here's one that says full build iconic 69 LZ1 Chevy Camaro. And this is on a channel called Powered Nation 2. It's got 1.6 million hits in two months is because they are buying views. They are promoting their own views. And they are fake. Fake. Why would you do that? Why would you pay to have fake views? I don't understand that. I think it's, it's bullshit and ridiculous. Has anybody ever looked a company up that they were going to use, like let's just say, for instance, the dentist. So you look this dentist office up, and before you go to the dentist, you want to see what the Google reviews are. Well, did you know, and I'm going to go ahead and open this up because we're talking about dentists here. Did you know you can buy, you can buy fake reviews now? Um, for $100, you can get eight authentic, they call them authentic reviews from real people that will leave a review on your Google reviews. They're fake reviews. So anyway, I'm going to show you a dental office that uses fake reviews. Okay. I know this for a fact.
You can't even trust Google reviews anymore because Google reviews are fake now. Now here is a guy, he's got 108 Google reviews and we're gonna go down, I'm gonna read you a couple of them. Uh, here's one right here. Uh, so thankful for switching to D-Dental for my family's dental needs. I am very happy and love my teeth now. They are always so nice and professional. Hands down, the best dentist in town. Doesn't that sound a little bit outrageous to you? A little bit over the edge? Okay, first time ever been to the dentist. Best dentist in the fucking world. The best dental office, Dr. Daniel and the staff are so welcoming and are willing to answer any and all questions. You might even get lucky enough to get a few puppy kisses during your visit. Miss Iggy is so sweet and comforting. 10 out of 10 recommendation. Okay, hold on a minute. You might even get lucky enough to get a few puppy kisses at a dental office. You're shitting me, right? <laughs> wow. Uh, here's one. Uh, had been gone since the 80s. But let me tell you, D-Dental is the place to go. High quality work. Significantly more responsible, reasonably prices. Friendly, informative staff, which I had been, which I had become their customer a lot sooner than today. Sure thing, Tony Smith. <laughs> Unbelievable, you know, unfucking believable. So when you get on Google reviews and you see all these wonderful, fabulous uh, in the world. Uh, uh, what was that? What did that lady say she wanted? She was going to get, uh, you might get lucky enough to get a few puppy kisses during your visit. Seriously? You think I'm bullshitting, right? You think I'm bullshitting. And this is how fake the world has become. Where's it at? Is that the one? No, that's Tony Smith. There it is. Right there. Look at that. Look at that. Five reviews. And, and look. Oh, my God, she's going to get some puppy kisses at the dentist. Oh, my God. Miss Iggy is so lovely and comforting. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I'm sorry, people. It's bullshit. Bullshit. Total bullshit. I don't give a fuck what anybody says, okay? Um, the world has become such a fake situation. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> Um, I was always skeptical at all good reviews. If you actually go to somebody's page and and you see all these, and, and I'm not talking, if you go to one and it has all good reviews, it's the way that they write the reviews. You can tell they're fake. If you if you go on there and it's like this most wonderful, fabulous, like kind of like that one I showed you, 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 I mean, that's a fake review. Come on, people. It's fake. Okay? The best review that you can ever get out of any business is how long they've been in business. They use very minimal advertising and they got a lot of work. That's the best reference you're ever going to have. Word of mouth, people. I don't advertise at my shop. I got a sign out there so people know where I'm at, which is very hard to find in all this Airbnb scumbag shit, but they do find me. I don't get a lot of business as far as collision goes, but people know me, all right? They know me, and I don't advertise that much, if I advertise at all. Um, this guy Todd says, angry Pete. Okay, yeah, I am angry. Uh, let's see, the views aren't fake. You are just paying to get in people's feed that normally wouldn't see your videos. If they like your video, they might follow your channel. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on Todd's channel because Todd acts like he knows all about it. And I'd like to see Todd's videos. Can we do that, Todd? Okay, because I've been doing videos for um, almost 14, no, longer than that. I've been doing it like for 15 years. And I know all about what the promotion is and how they do it. 
And yes, they do give you, you buy your views, okay? You buy your um, likes, your thumbs ups. Oh, and you can actually pay YouTube to not give you any thumbs downs. So you're wrong, Todd, sorry. But now hold on, Todd is correct in one aspect. And the, the aspect that he's correct in is that once you start getting all these views, these fake views that they can give you, because they do on the platform, they can do whatever the fuck they want. Think about it. Then your video will jump up in line so other people can see it. So in a way, Todd is right. But in another aspect, you're totally wrong. Now he says he wasn't attacking me. Well, I'm not attacking you either. I'm angry. Okay, Todd? I'm fucking angry. Isn't that what you just said, Todd? Uh, anyway, back to what we were talking about. Um, the world has become a bullshit place to live because you got to pay for everything now. Uh, what you used to use back in the day, you don't use now. They have completely changed it. Uh, many bought some um, Mr. Clean to uh, scrub the floors with. It's a totally different concentrated uh, product. It's not even the same. You got to use two to three times more to do what you used to do with the old stuff. That means that you have to buy two to three times more. You have to buy it to, to do it. It's, it's, a, it's a scam, people. It's a big scam. What's my friend Pete going to do today? Uh, my friend Pete is going to um, plant trees. I got to plant 18 trees because all the trees that I bought uh, died. We found out that they were actually the wrong trees for this area. But uh, the people over at the tree place, every time you talk to them on the phone, you talk to a different professional, and one professional tells you this, the other one tells you that, and then when you're all done and you get down to it, the next professional, oh, well, you shouldn't have planted those trees there anyway. They're not even made for that area. Well, that's not what the other, the last 37 professionals said. So, you know, you can't win for losing these days. Uh, bug and tar cleaner never worked. That's true. I did try to use bug and tar cleaner, and it was a joke. You had to go through a lot of shit to use it. That's for damn sure. Yeah, you got it, Ed. I'm going to plant trees and build a 10-foot fence so the trees, all, all they'll be able to see is a 10-foot fucking fence. <laughs> I planted 13 trees along where I'm going to put the 10-foot fence. I got 13 poplar trees out there that I planted a year and a half ago. Those things are growing awesome. I thought what I would do, my concept was, is that I would make a net natural fence line out of trees. Well, guess what? That ain't going to keep the noise away. That ain't going to keep the, the aggravation of the fucking Jeeps driving up and down and the razors and the motorcycles and all the other shit. I got $3,000 in 18 trees over here and I got $1,800 in 13 trees over there. That's $5,800. Do you know how much that fence is going to cost me? And I'm not talking about my labor to do it. This is just for the materials. $5,800. Now, the guy building all these Airbnbs here, um, he's going to put a fence up where the Airbnbs are, and then that's going to be a six-foot, and then I am going to pay him the difference so we can put a 10-foot fence up. So I'm going to be blocked in here by 10-foot fences. So we'll have to see how that turns out. I don't know how it's going to turn out. Okay, Pete, why is there a place built across from you? Was it there before you moved in? Um, if you're talking about the two shops across the street, yes, they were here before me. The guy that actually owned all this property that he sold, he's the one that built those two buildings over there and started the shop cul-de-sac. And then I was, I bought my property. And of course, at that time, you can only have a shop. 
Oh, you can, if you don't have stuff, then you can't buy this property. So, and then after, of course, I built my shop and went through all the harassment of what I had to go through. Okay, then it was pretty much over. So, yeah. I feel kind of out of place here, to be honest with you, having a fucking automotive shop amongst all these fucking houses. It, it kind of sucks, man. It really fucking does. Francis is in Philadelphia. I used to talk to a guy in Philadelphia. He might even be watching this video. Um, can you see that up there? Can you see that clock right there? There it is, right there. Yeah, I used to talk to a guy that claims he was uh, restored clocks. Well, you fucked my clock up. You didn't restore it. You fucking broke the son of a bitch. Now it sits there doing nothing. And then you still... The guy still got the pendulum that goes to it. Never even fucking gave that back to me. Yeah. Every time I hear the word Philadelphia, I think of that motherfucker. And you know what's really sad about it? He used to be a, uh, I wouldn't say a friend. I would say a social media friend. That's all we got now. We got social media friends. So he was actually a good social media friend. I used to talk to him on the phone all the time. Real nice guy. But he fucked me around on his fucking clock. Took my money and fucked me. Anyway, so I got another guy that says, that claims he can go ahead and fix that clock for me. I'm waiting in line. And I'll be sending it to him out in uh, Ohio. Um, I trust that uh, Sam, the clock guy, knows what he's doing. I've seen some of his work and he's a really honest kid. But uh, anyway, back to the situation of, my friend Pete's gotta go. I got a car to prime today. Um, in one hour, I'm actually going to go, they're going to have an auction down here in town. Uh, and I'm going to go down there and check that out. But, uh, before I go, I want to, uh, I want to show everybody some art pictures that I got <clears throat> and I'm going to be getting more. So if you want to support my friend, Pete, we got a beautiful junkyard scenery here. Uh, printed on aluminum. Um, the sun, there it goes. The sun was right on it. Beautiful picture. Now this one here is a little expensive. Uh, this is a this is a big one. Um, beautiful picture there. I got this one here. This is an awesome seller. Uh, this is uh, actually Monument Valley, and we got the old trucks in line. I don't know what's behind this one here. Let's see. Okay, this is a mining. This is an old mining truck. Um, anybody that's into old trucks, that's a beautiful picture of an old mining truck. And then I got uh, a couple of these left. Uh, these are actually good sellers. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this one. That's an awesome picture right there. We got that one. Um, these small ones here, they go for $150 plus shipping. Just to let you know. And we got this one here. Let's go ahead and look at that one. And these are junkyard cars I took pictures of and I photoshopped them into Moab sceneries. I had 125 for each of these. If you want to support my friend Pete. And I got more coming. Um, there's a picture of my Etzel desk. That's an awesome picture right there. And then I got some uh, canyons and Moab sceneries over here. Right there. That's an awesome picture. So, yeah. Uh, I will go ahead and advertise this. If anybody has any Super 8 or 8 millimeter movies that they want to get rid of, and you can see them right here, <clears throat> if you got any sitting around and you want to get rid of them, contact my friend Pete. I buy them. I buy old uh, Super 8, 8 millimeter movies. Um, here's a whole bunch of them over here. And here's an old, another project. I got a bunch of projectors and movies. So if you have any old movies that you want to get rid of, old home movies, contact my friend Pete and I'll buy them from you. Uh, other than that, yes, I do sign the pictures. If you want me to sign the pictures, I will sign them on the back and date them. So I do do that. So always remember, people, if you have a pet 
and you love them with all your heart, don't ever put them out of your heart and always keep them in your mind. That's my little buddy, Bruno Axel. Uh, that was one of the last pictures I took of him. And I will always remember my little pal, Axel. He will be with me for the rest of my life in my heart as long as I live. <clears throat> so when I make that picture frame that I'm telling you about, I will show everybody it. And I'll try to advertise those because I think that uh, a lot of people are going to like it. Um, Pamela Thrasher says she's got a Super 8 camera. Uh, if you get on eBay, you can buy film for that camera. But I will tell you, you're going to spend an arm and a leg for it. If you got any movies, 8mm or, or Super 8, I do not want 16. If you have 16mm, throw them in the trash. I don't want them. But uh, if you have old movies you want to get rid of, let my friend Pete know. Reel-to-reel -reel movies, not the little cassettes. Okay. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Volkswagen Planet says, God bless everyone. Yes, God bless everyone. Uh, well, Jay Finch says, shadow box. Um, well, it's not going to be a shadow box because the picture is going to be made out of aluminum, but uh, it'll be really cool. And then I'm going to make one for Bruno too so I can have a picture of each of them so I can look at them. Take it easy, guys. We'll see you later. Uh, the Mustang will be leaving. Um, it's been a long trip with the Mustang. It's a beautiful car. It came out awesome. And I'm really proud to say that I did all the work to that car. And uh, I hope that Frank, the owner of the Rustang, enjoys that car and actually gets it running. Um, I don't know if he's actually got the engine built yet or not, but he's still got to put the engine and the transmission and all that in it. And he also said that he's going to have the rear end rebuilt in the car. So hopefully, uh, you know, he'll, he'll get it running one day. And if my friend Pete's still alive at that time and, and still making videos, we actually might see that car running and driving down the streets of New Jersey somewhere. Take it easy. We'll see you later. And uh, whatever you do in life, always remember time is not on your side. In a blink of an eye, you're going to be older than you are today. Having a pet and losing a pet proves that time goes very, very fast. We'll see you later. Take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, right here. Loving Jesus Christ in my heart and wishing my little pet, Axel, was in the house so I can go pick him up and pet him one more time. Take it easy, guys.